let's rate some Arsenal summer transfer targets. We'll start off with midfielders. I've got four sentiments in front of me. These are Tielemans, no three, sorry, Tielemans, Rice and Caicedo. What, which one do you want to start with? Who do you want to talk about first? Uh, because, just because I briefly mentioned it earlier, I did just kind of want to ask your opinions on Tielemans. On Tielemans, it. okay. What, what do you want, what, just opinions in general of how he's been this season? Uh, yes, but also what you think will happen with him in the summer. Right, so he's leaving, obviously. Yes. Um, yeah. I think that's, that's been, that hasn't been 100% certain because he did pick up a big an ankle injury that initially we were like, this could keep him out for quite a few months, at which point we were going, he might sign a new contract here. It was then revealed to be six weeks and he will be coming back in a couple of weeks and he will be back. Um, everybody knows Tielemans is a good player. The FA Cup final goal will go down in Leicester City folklore and just what a player he is. However, this season he hasn't been great. He's a bit sluggish on the ball, a little bit slow to release it. He hasn't been helped by the fact that the guy who used to be so good alongside him, Wilfred and Didi, has turned to, well, he's awful. Um, genuinely, Nonplus Mendy is somehow better than him at this point, and he was a player that was out in the cold and basically Xhaka, but worse. Um, and we didn't all hate him. Um, only part of the fan base did. Well, I had no idea about the Ndidi thing. I still thought he was fast, to be honest. Ge no genuinely, idea. he's got he'll have 12 months left in his contract this summer. If he goes for anything above 25 million, I'll be shocked. He has been awful. Um, do, do, do you think there still could be a team that picks him up for a decent amount of money just because of his reputation? Because... Who, Ndidi? Um... Uh, yeah, because uh, a lot of people seem to rate him as a top midfielder in the Premier League. I, but I, I flip him, I hope so. Uh, if you want to come through and pay <laughs> 30 million, please. Maybe, maybe Newcastle will go and pay like 50 million for him. Sorry. 50? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yes. 50. Well, please. He's, he's, he's on a stretcher about half, half of the season do, every season. Do you want me to drive him there? I can't drive. <laughs> do you want me to drive him there? He might not arrive. Um, oh, we're rhyming now. Um, but yeah, Tielemans, good player, just hasn't played very well this season, but... I can't hate on the bloke. Wherever he goes, I will support him. And he yeah. made one of the best moments in my life come true. Sorry, future kids, you're coming in at least number three. Because winning the Premier League, <laughs> seeing that live, and then watching on TV, Tina and scoring a goal in the FA Cup final, not being topped by any of you guys being born. So, yeah. Um, I love him, but not been great. So, yeah. Tielemans, Rice and Caicedo. Talk me through those options that Arsenal have this summer. And who do you think they will end up actually going for? So Tielemans is is someone we've been linked to for a long time, a long time, um, and I think because of that, some Arsenal fans almost have gone off him now. Mm -hmm. um, but listening to you talk about him there, it makes me feel like he's the type of player that if you put him in the right environment, he would really thrive. You know, like mm. um, s similar to Shaka probably because. Xhaka is someone that in the wrong environment can look pretty terrible because of the, the type of player he is. He's not very quick. And that would be fair to say about Tielemans as well. Mm -hmm. He's not very quick at all. Um, but playing in that left eight role, I could see him being very effective. Um, having said that, I would rather the next two players on the list. Mm -hmm. I think, um, the, their profiles really do fit exactly what we want to do. The high pressure, the energy, the and then, the, the, yeah, the youth as well. Like, they'll be there for a long time. I know Tielemans isn't old either, but... Um, no. Uh, I, like, uh, a lot, a lot, there's been a lot of talk about Arsenal's youth, and that's that's right, but the one area in the pitch that isn't actually very youthful is midfield. If you know it's Party and Xhaka are nearing on 30 or 30, I think Xhaka... Oh, Nene as well, El of Nini. course, and... Uh... El Nini, El Nini too, of course. Um, but, yeah, it feels like if there's an area that does actually need to uh, be become a little bit younger it would be it would be there and Caicedo is a superb player and can play in the six or the eight role and same can be said of Declan Rice mm -hmm. um, and interesting interestingly enough I actually thought Declan Rice was going to be another six but the way that we're talking about getting both Rice and Caicedo mm -hmm. um, I, get, I start to get the feeling that Rice actually might play as the as the eight, and it might be Casado that plays as the number six okay. next season. Um, but yeah, either way, I think I'd yeah I'd love both of those guys to come in. So mm -hmm. we're going to give them all a rating. Um, 
Tiedemans would still be like if we if Arteta I, I think most Arsenal fans are at the stage if, if uh, Mikel Arteta wants this player we want that player too okay so if Tiedemans comes in happy but at the moment I'd say Tiedemans maybe a five mm-hmm. or a six actually I think a six would be more fair because I, th- I think he's a good player but mm-hmm. then I'd give Rice I really like Dick and Rice so I'd say a nine mm-hmm. Caicedo maybe an eight Okay, fair enough. Um, one thing I do want to speak about with Tiedemans that I t- tactically, we're going back to our build tactic days. Um, he likes to drop it, He well, he has recently for us, because of Ricardo Pereira or Castagna deciding to bomb on up the right-hand side, he has been dropping back into the right half space, so kind of becoming a right-back-ish when before he picked up his injury. I'm not quite sure how that would work with Arsenal or if you just have to lose that from his game altogether with obviously you having a right back that stays back. But if he were to then be able to fill into the left half space and become that fill in left back, then that would be very, very interesting. So on a tactical point of view, it interests me. Um, And that will have gone over half of the listeners' heads. Yeah, it is. (laughs) It is interesting what you said, though, because... That is the same type of thing Jacka used to do uh-huh. at, uh, in the left half space. Um, not, or not sorry, not the left half space, but uh, in the, yeah, that left back area mm. when Tierney would used to bump forward. Yeah, um, assuming that's similar to what Ricardo Pereira does. You guys? Yeah, he got, um, he's he's a right winger basically at this point. Yeah, yeah, that's what Tierney was essentially when we were mm. going forward, and Jacka would fit into that role. But now that Zinchenko's came into the team, Jacka plays in the. Yeah, in the left half space and quite high forward, and he's not uh, as reliant in the build up. Mm-hmm. And I mean, if Jacket can make that transition, I'm sure Taylor was good too. Yeah, I'm sure he can. So there we go. There's a little bit of tactical talk on our left half spaces about Tiedemans to do with the elbow tactic. Um, and we will move from midfield out to the right hand side. Um, and we've got three right wingers down here because obviously Saka needs a proper backup. Trossard is the proper backup for Martinelli. Saka needs a proper backup because I think it's probably fair to say Reese Nelson probably isn't as and I know you like him, but he probably isn't the be all and end all right wing backup for Saka. Yeah, well, I mean, Reese Nelson is the original star boy, but of course, I, I of this. course, I, I love him a bit, but mm-hmm. also I couldn't complain if uh, Arteta decided to bring in another right winger this summer because. Bruce Nelson he's had chances and it he has. hasn't happened for him I mean I think he has been a little bit unfortunate but um, and if Arsena decided he wants to give Bruce Nelson that shot next season you couldn't really argue with me either, no. because he's had his moments this season and he has. he's got talent for sure um, but to be honest I think as much as it all hurt I think it may be the best thing for both the both parties for him to mm-hmm. go and get regular first team football next season. Yeah, and Maybe he's absolutely capable. There's many clubs that will take him, you know, around, you know, in that 12th to 20th bracket at the moment. Any of the sides that stay up out of that or any of the sides that come up. I could see him doing quite well at Burnley under company, to be honest. Um, oh, wow, that'd be nice. Combining with yeah. Scott Twine, um, the poshest man I think I've ever <laughs> seen or heard. He is so posh. But we are looking at a new right winger for when he moves on. And we have three options down here. Now, there's a theme. Ferran Torres, Usman Dembele and Rafinha. Can anyone tell what the theme might be to do with right wingers that Arsenal are looking at? Because I'm, I'm a little bit puzzled. Is, is uh, this, I can't tell. Is it, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it maybe something to do with the... No, they're all different. different oh, yeah, they all play for Barcelona. Um, <laughs> but talk me through these, then. Okay, starting with... Uh, how about... Ferran Torres, we'll yeah. Ferran Torres. Um, he is someone that um, quite briefly linked to him in January, mm-hmm. but I think a lot of Arsenal fans have kind of made that link themselves because of the connection with Man City and because he can play everywhere across the front three. And yeah, I mean he's a he's a pretty top player when mm-hmm. he gets going, and we saw that in his brief stint at Man City. Um, and Arsenal fans are very desperate for soccer to not burn out by the age of 25 um, indeed so they want to give him some a little bit of rest at times mm-hmm. and yeah he's a good player um i'm not sure I, I can't say i've watched him loads but i'm not sure he's really the a, a similar profile to Saka on the no. right hand side he's right footed um, i think as well yes he is right footed and he gives me i think he's more of an inside forward yeah um he's not really someone that's on the touchline yeah. and 
uh-huh. um, like like Saka or, or Martinelli. But having said that, it's yeah, a different option. Trossard's not really the same as Martinelli on the left hand side. They're quite different left wingers. Yeah. Um, so it's not impossible that we go for someone like Torres. No. Um, but I think there are maybe there, there isn't a, a great market for right wingers. To be honest, I think there's mm-hmm. a reason that. As much as I love saying Saka probably is, um, if not the best, or he'd be the second or third best right winger in the world at the moment, which would be, I think would be fair. Yeah. Um, but I think that's also because there aren't that many good right wingers in the world. No. Uh, say it quietly so Arsenal fans don't beat me up. Um, yeah. Um, for for Antares, yeah, I give him maybe a 6 out of 10. Okay, 6 out of 10, alright. And how does that uh, compare to Dembele and Rafinha? So Dembele is someone we were just linked to all the time back in the day when mm-hmm. um, when he just wasn't performing at yeah. Barcelona. And since he has been performing at Barcelona, I think a lot of fans really love him there. So um, as much as, yeah, um, he's a good player, but he also seems to struggle to um, stay fit, would be mm-hmm. an understatement. Um, so to be honest, as much as he's a talented player, I don't really want him at Arsenal. Um, okay. I mean, if, if Arteta wanted to bring him in, sure, I suppose, but that still wouldn't be something they'd be massively comfortable with with Arsenal's history of players that just sit in the injury room mm-hmm. all season. So I'm going to give that one a, a four. A four, okay. And then a Rafinha, a man that you have obviously been very strongly linked with in the past. Yes, I am a huge fan of Rafinha. Mm-hmm. I think he's so talented. So, so talented. Um, we saw... But how much of a leader he can be as well, playing for Leeds, and he's really. Can you imagine that Leeds team last season without Rafinha? Like they barely survived, but the skin of their teeth. And Rafinha had some superb moments mm-hmm. for them. Um, yeah, clutch in many, many important uh, times for them. And yeah, he's looked pretty good for Barcelona as well. I mean, he's, there was uh, a time where he probably wasn't getting the game time maybe that um, he wanted of Arsenal. But having said that, we just we've just mentioned three different top right wingers that could potentially be an option for Arsenal in the summer so uh-huh. it's probably understandable um, but yeah I think he really suits that role um, that Saka plays as a as a right winger uh, right on the touchline and he has the creative ability the dribbling he's also not bad on his left foot oh sorry on his right foot mm-hmm. um, and he has a bit, the ability to play on the left if we need him to as well so I think out of he, he would be the best option on the market okay. I think uh, for us, having said that, I think there was already a quote from someone at Barcelona in January that he's not for sale. He's not for sale. Yes. Um, having said that, everyone has everyone is for sale. Mm-hmm. Everyone is for sale, and Barcelona especially um, with the finances and the problems they've had. There. Yeah, I mean, so I think, yeah, if you, I think if you put enough money on it. Mm. they can't register Gavi because they're in so much debt so they Mm. will need to get they will need to make 200 million this summer or even if Gavi doesn't want to leave for free he will have to because they physically will not be able to play him I think that's the case unless he could stay on with his youth youth contract but that is not an option that they really want to go down so yeah I think uh, I think that's fair enough and I think Rafinha could be an option he could get out and would fit in at Arsenal very very well yeah, I think um, if I was Edu, just you know, you just put the pressure on Barcelona. You know, say mm-hmm. here's fifty million. We give you fifty million now. You keep Gavi. You still have two pretty good right wingers. You know, give it a go because um, I think it makes a lot of sense for them to sell one of those right wingers if they're trying mm. to keep Gavi. So perfect. And then we uh, move on into the strikers. Now I have three strikers again in front of me. These strikers are Osimhen, Vlachovic, and Hoyland. Hoyland's probably the one that people might not know about from that. They're obviously the new Atalanta Danish strike who was kind of just blown up in the last sort of couple of months, I guess it's probably fair to say. What do you rate of these strikers and which one would you like to bring in as competition for Gabriel Jesus? So I heard um, Hoyland is actually the new uh, the new robot that has been introduced by, by Tesla. Um, yeah. Haaland. Hoyland mm-hmm. is, the, is the new model. I heard Elon Musk had a bit um, of fun with him. Yes. Oh, that's an interesting statement to say. Uh, but, fine. No. T- shut up. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not having. Any, I'm not having any. That's what she said. So anything like that. We're we're we're, uh, we're moving. Sorry, on. Been watching a little bit too much of the office. Here, N- no, no one's still listening to this at this point. They, they gave up at elbows. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure they have. Uh, we're just here talking to ourselves. At this Pretty point. much. Um, Port Island is an interesting one. Um, I actually made a post about him on Instagram mm. the other day, and it, uh, because of the, the hype around him recently, got a fair few likes, but they also came with a few, fair few comments uh, getting very angry at me for a very limited link. Um, which mm-hmm. it was, there wasn't much in it, um, but it was from a good reporter saying that Arsenal are one of the obviously loads of clubs are looking at them. Mm. Um, Arsenal were one of them. And that's all I reported, but pe- then people were out in the comments going, fake news, fake news. And it's like, well, you haven't read the, the caption, have you? Mm-hmm. Because I didn't say he's coming to Arsenal. I said Arsenal are one of the many teams, probably a, about 40 or 50 teams in Europe that could afford him. And yeah, interested in him. But, Yeah. Anyways, sorry, that's just my little rant. I wanted to talk no, about Go stuff. ahead, don't worry. Um, but I can't see it happening because he probably, at, at, at Atlanta, with the way that the prices are going these days, he's probably going to be worth 80 or 90 million. And it's just, like, he looks like a talented player, but I don't really know enough about him mm-hmm. just yet to say that it's going to be a great sign or whatever. Um, he matches the profile in terms of... Uh, really athletic tall forward I think if we're going to get a striker in which I'm not sure we will because obviously as I mentioned before I've got uh, Nketiah and then Balogun coming back mm. and then Jesus and Trossard as well there's a lot of options there so if we're going to bring someone in someone will have to go mm-hmm. um, but I would say with is it Hoyland? yeah um, listen as I said if I said I want some sure so he seems like a decent player, but mm-hmm. I don't know if, enough about him to judge. So I'm going to go with a five. Okay. And um, then so what we're we saying? We've got left Osman and Vlahovic. Osman and Vlahovic. Vlahovic is has a quite a strong connection. He to does not not personally. He was very he close to left. joining, wasn't he? Or you wanted him uh, at least. Yes, we really wanted him. But uh, I think a lot of Arsenal fans are burnt by what happened because agents, the agents did not even pick up at his phone calls mm-hmm. because they ah. were so determined to go to Juventus. But, Classic. Um, fair to say Arsenal fans have loved to see the downfall of not only Juventus but also Vlahovic. I mean, mm-hmm. Vlahovic hasn't been terrible, but I mean, Juventus has been poor and he's been one of the players who have not been too sharp either. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the meantime, Arsenal are of the league. So... Yeah, I mean, there were a lot of Arsenal fans calling for us to get drawn with Juventus in the Europa League because we really wanted to teach them mm. a lesson. But, um, yeah, um, it's, he's still a talented player, of, of course, and there's a reason Arsenal wanted him and Arsenal wanted him. Mm-hmm. And actually, out of all the three, I think he would m- maybe be the most realistic of happening. Okay. I think because Osimhen is uh, uh, unreal and probably... Will be going for upwards of 100 million well 150 okay. even <sighs> wow yeah. knowing what Napoli won yeah. and with yeah. Kavala Scalia as well yeah I suppose with um, I mean it was back in 2016 and 17 they were trying to claim Koulibaly for about 80 or 90 million and that was before centre back signings mm-hmm. were even like that so um, I'd say Vlahovic okay um, would be the most likely I'd say maybe a seven okay oh no maybe an eight, maybe yeah now seven seven okay and then to be fair I'd actually rather Osimhen but we're, we're talking about money here as well and I don't want to spend that much money on that no well, we've got some decent strikers so I'd say a uh, a six okay fair enough 